Well, this weekend is bringing back a lot of memories. It was one year ago the Marshall Fire started, and we are still hearing stories of bravery and neighbors saving neighbors. Dare we say it, it looks like Southwest seems to be back at normal, at least in the sense of getting on a flight and getting out of the city. Finding your luggage, another story. Hey, it has been a rough season for the Broncos, but this week some players started speaking out in support of Russell. We are going to start off your Saturday morning with a live look outside. Ooh, absolutely gorgeous. We hope you have a great New Year's Eve planned ahead. Maybe you've got something fun. Maybe you've just got something chill. Whatever it is, we wish you a happy and safe New Year's Eve. Keely, I feel like I have just been getting CDOT alert after CDOT yep. alert about all the snow that's been starting in the mountains. Yeah, it's great. We It's really piling up in the mountains. We're getting lots of snow already. We're going to get in some areas upwards of three Ooh. feet of snow. And if you're traveling along I-70 through the mountains, through the passes this morning, which I'm sure a lot of folks are this week. Right, it's a holiday weekend, yeah. Be prepared for winter-like driving conditions. It is going to be snowy. It is going to be slick up there. Let's take you outside right now where we are dry here in the metro area. It is certainly chilly out there, 30 degrees. But you can see on our satellite what's happening. We've got this northwesterly flow bringing in the moisture. It is in the form of snow, as you can see up there in the higher elevations. Along I-70, you can see right there. There, Vale getting some snow right now down in the Glenwood Springs. Also want to point out right there, this is actually freezing rain you see up near Sterling. This is I-76 traveling up to the north and east. So slick conditions out there this morning. This is a brief storm, a brief bout of freezing rain. It is going to move on out by about 9 o'clock this morning. But again, want to give you an alert on the driving conditions there. So for the metro area, we're looking partly sunny. Temperatures warming up to about 48 degrees overnight, mostly cloudy, dropping back down to the mid 20s. And as we head into the new year, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies, a high of 40 degrees and snow returning to the forecast snow late tomorrow. It is going to be a snowy day here in the metro area on Monday as well. We'll talk more about that coming up in your full forecast in just a bit. It's one of those moments that can still haunt you. It's been a year, one year ago, that Colorado was watching a disaster on a scale that we had never seen. Wildfire was racing through suburban neighborhoods still covered in Christmas lights. Two people died as the Marshall Fire ran through Louisville, Superior, and other neighborhoods in Boulder County. By the time New Year's Eve arrived, 1,084 homes were gone. For those who had the luxury, they turned off their TVs. They were going back to their lives. But the pain for family after family was just starting because that fire was fast. The recovery this year has been slow. Only about one in four families have a permit to rebuild. We took the drone video on the left in the days after the fire. On the right is just a couple weeks ago. The debris is gone and the frames of some of those new homes are starting to go up. One year later, we are still waiting to find out what did start this fire. That could be released within a couple of weeks. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office did say earlier this week the fire likely had multiple ignition points. On December 30th, 2021, and in the year since, we have been sharing the stories of heroism and the resilience of first responders and everyday people who faced that nightmare that day. Nine News reporter Kelly Rinke is introducing us to a man who saved his neighbor and then saved himself in the process. There was nothing out here, no houses, no nothing. Not much survived the Marshall Fire. And that's why that's still there. They're not ready to say goodbye. A year later, Phil Kuffner and his family's property in Superior is a museum of memories. They don't look like much now, but they were really, really nice cars. This one over here is that old Harley that my dad gave me. Treasures burned. A life built over 30 years became a hole in the ground. It, it took a lot of years to get it to get it to what it was. The fire took away his home, his brother's home, even part of their business on the lot. So I went in the house and Vicky looked out the window, my wife, and she said, that's that's not dust. And I knew it was bad. Vicki Kuffner packed up and left. We just decided we were going to fight this fire, so. What can you do? How can you help? She knew Phil and their son Daniel would stay behind to save the house. I just ran down to the shed where we kept all of our fire hoses. Daniel hosed one side. All you're thinking about is trying to save your house. Phil's brother George sprayed another. 
And I would think the flames were 12 or 15 feet tall coming over that hill in that 100 mile an hour windstorm. Just solid wind. And when I turned into it, it actually knocked me off my feet. Tree chips started burning. And then they started burning little holes in our hose. <laughs> you can, you can kind of tell where those things hit. It's where those little wood chips hit this. Wind killed their chances. Instead of protecting the house, Phil focused on saving himself. My mind wasn't thinking clear enough to to uh, turn and put the fire hose on me. It, it just happened. Phil and his jacket yeah. barely made it out. This is, this is what happened. And I was spraying with my hose. And when the flame got, I don't know, maybe about five yards from him, a gust of wind came and I lost him. And you can tell where it went through the jacket and the beads that were hitting me. You can tell where it burned through. That's where I had the small burns. With burns on his back and debris in his eyes, Phil ran to his truck. Just as I started forward, there was a clear spot and Dave was standing in the road. His neighbor Dave stayed behind too. Dave looked like he was a burnt hot dog. He was completely black, looked like he had no hair to me. I could see the whites of his eyes and everything else was black. And I, and I said, Dave, get in. Phil drove seven miles to a hospital, thinking his neighbor is barely holding on. I said, I'm driving kind of conservative because I can't see. I, I wiped my eyes once and they got so full of uh, tears and water, I could not see at all, so I had to stop in the middle of the road. From there, God guided me to that hospital. I got there, I opened the door and Dave grabbed a hold of Dave's arm because he couldn't see to walk in the door. I'm standing at the reception desk talking to the lady and about that time I felt and I turned and there was a wheelchair behind me and I never remember my butt actually hitting the chair. Saving the neighbor's life saved his own. Phil's neighbor was treated and released, but Phil inhaled so much smoke, he needed a ventilator to survive. It was just a, a true blessing from God that he made it through it. After an induced coma, Phil woke up six days later. I hear my daughter's voice saying, it's okay, Dad, it's okay. So she goes, the bad news, it's all gone. The house, everything, everything burned, it's all gone. And then she goes, but the good news is, it says, everybody's okay. The fire burned so much and ignited new perspective. I had a different outlook. I, I, was, I was glad to be back here and I was glad to be alive. Very little is still here. It's just stuff. But their memory survived. Phil was given a chance to make even more. We still have the important things, our families and the ability to do these things again. In Superior, I'm Kelly Rinke, Nine News. Phil was in the hospital for more than 10 days. Doctors told him most firefighters don't survive what he went through. He thinks Dave was let out in less than a week. The governor's plan to rebuild in original town Superior, a place to make more memories with grandkids. Two people did not make it out as the Marshall fire burned. Robert Sharp died in his home near Marshall Road, close to where the fire started. His family said they believe he stayed to grab personal mementos. He was 69 years old. Nadine Turnbull died in her home in Original Town Superior. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office told us she went back to her home to rescue her dogs. She was 91 years old. The Marshall Fire was the costliest wildfire in Colorado history. The Rocky Mountain Insurance Information Association tallied at least $2 billion in insured losses. The cost to recover is also very high. Over the last year, federal and state governments, along with Boulder County, have spent at least $182 million on recovery. Most of that money went to support rebuilding through grants and loans to fire survivors. State and federal agencies have spent at least $35 million on debris removal and cleanup after the fire, and spending will likely go up as more grants and loans are approved. We'll never know how many people lost incredibly important members of their families, their pets, in the Marshall Fire, but we do know that it's a lot. Our Cole Sullivan talked to a researcher at CU who is now trying to save pets from the next disaster. Penny is Jill Sellers' princess. She is a total indoor dog. The complete opposite of the dog who stole her heart. This is him playing in the snow. Every other photo on her phone is of Peanut. Let's see. This is him with Papa in the backyard. The previous March on a snowy day, thrilled to death that the snow was here. He would have loved this weather. He died a year ago when the Marshall Fire burned down her house in Sagamore. He, he was part of our life. Like he was literally part of us. Like it was sort of an extension of my husband and I. Jill tried to make it home to save him, but the fire got there first. 
People will endanger their lives to rescue their pets. Leslie Irvin researched what happened to pets after Colorado's most destructive wildfire. She looked at public records and population estimates to find the staggering toll. And the number we came up with was 1,183 lost pets. And that is an estimate. It's there. There is no way to be precise. In this case, the fire moved so fast, planning ahead probably would not have helped. But it might next time. If you want to save your pets in the next disaster, the best thing we can do is make friends with our neighbors. Someone nearby who could rescue pets if you're not home. Peanut was, we miss him so much. The emotional damage from the loss of a member of the family hits hard. That's the hardest part for everybody. It's not our stuff. We can, we can replace all of our things, but you cannot replace your pets. Jill says Penny brings her a different kind of love. We adopted each other. The day of the fire, my dad passed away. Um, so she lost her person, we lost her dog. So we have each other. A bond to help heal and to remember loved ones lost. Are you ready? Let's go. Jill's dad died hours before the fire started. We talked to her at a dog park in Louisville where the city is planning to build a memorial to all of the pets lost that day. She says that will help her heal too because she knows Peanut won't be forgotten. We know that this can be a really difficult time of year, so we just want to remind you there are resources available around the clock. Community Foundation Boulder County is paying for free counseling through Jewish Family Services. You can also get help 24-7 by calling or texting Colorado Crisis Services. That number is 844-493-8255, or you can text the word TALK to 38255. A Denver family is shattered after their father was run over by a driver in a semi truck. Court documents say that this was after an argument over work done and money owed. He left him there in the cold and didn't think about his family, didn't think about anything. Guillermo Duran Mejia owned a locksmith business. He was called to an Arapahoe County business a little before noon on Wednesday. And according to those court documents, there was a fight over payment for that work. At one point, Duran Mejia allegedly hit the truck with a club. And that's when investigators say the truck driver is accused of pulling away, turning towards Duran Mejia's van, and then running him over. Police say the driver got out of the truck, looked at him, called 911, and then made a delivery nearby. It's very heartbreaking knowing that somebody would leave a person out in the cold to die alone. Police stopped him later along I-25 in Fountain and officers arrested Eric Mejia on suspicion of vehicular homicide. He's now being held on a $100,000 bail and is due in court on Tuesday. We don't want to jinx it, but it looks like this morning Southwest is flying as normal. We're crossing our fingers here. The bad news, finding your luggage can still be a nightmare.